Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 29. In this video tutorial, I am going to talk about how to persist locks even after transaction commits. This slide talks about the scenario and the solution. Uh, the default behavior for the DB2 database is uh, all locks are released after a transaction commits or rolls back. Now, the desired behavior that uh, we are demonstrating in this tutorial is after a transaction commits or rollbacks, the locks are not to be released. Now, the solution as to how to achieve this is we use the db2 set command to set a registry variable. The name of the registry variable is db2 underscore keep table lock. The value that needs to be set is connection. So, what happens is normally the locks are released once the transaction commits or rolls back. So, the locks are freed at a transaction boundary. Now, by uh, setting this registry variable to a value connection we are uh, making the locks to be released at the connection boundary so only when the connection resets that time only the locks will be released uh, however there is a limitation uh, it is applicable only for those queries which will be running at ur and cs isolation levels the locks will be released for queries that are running under rs and rr isolation levels There is uh, also an important factor to consider here. There is an increase in speed but decrease in concurrency level. So what I mean by that is uh, by uh, not releasing the locks after the transaction commits or rolls back, we are able to see some increase in speed in the queries uh, which are using the UR and CS isolation levels. Why? Because the uh, we are saving the time uh, which is like every time the query runs it has to acquire the locks then it has to release the lock at when once the transaction commits or rolls back again if the same query is run within that same connection then again it has to acquire those many number of locks so uh, for those queries which are uh, running under ur and cs isolation level and repeatedly within the same connection in multiple transactions so those kind of uh, queries or the, the nature of workload if, if it is like that then you will find an increase in the speed uh, and the performance of the application but there will be decrease in the concurrency level because uh, we are not releasing the locks at transaction boundaries so the locks are persisted in the lock list memory area thereby reducing uh, the amount of memory for other applications to place the locks. So the other application might have to do some lock escalation or something or they have to work with a reduced memory uh, in terms of lock list memory area. So that's why the entire application concurrency level may come down a little bit. So you have to strike a balance between the speed and the concurrency level. So it is not like you can use this registry variable, uh, you, can, you can set this registry variable in any OLTP database. You have to really have a justification as to the nature of the workload, the nature of the queries and the concurrency level. You have to make a balance between them. Now let us uh, get into few examples and demonstrate this behavior. So here in application 1, I am connecting to test database and I am initiating a transaction. I am selecting uh, records from table A, table B, table C, table D. Four tables I am using. Table A, table B, table C, table D. Uh, it's a simple query. Select start from table A with UR. So the table A will be run with UR isolation level. Table B will be run with CS isolation level. Table C will be run with RS isolation level. Table D will be run with RR isolation level. So let's just quickly run that in app 1. So this is like a normal behavior that I am going to demonstrate. Okay. So connect to test is happening and db2 plus c which means it's initiating a transaction. So select star from table a, table b, table c, table d. So all the four queries have run and they have uh, returned the results. Okay. The transaction is still not uh, yet committed. Okay. So I go to app 2. I look for the uh, list applications command. Okay. So the application handle is 8. Okay. Then I update the monitor switches for locking on. Okay. That is also done. Then I get the snapshot for locks for application agent ID 8. 
okay so i am getting the logs that are acquired by application handle 8 okay so you can see that since the transaction is not committed uh, and all the four tables have run so it has acquired logs so total logs held is nine logs are held okay so this is the logs held as of now so when i when i commit the transaction in app one okay so i have selected four tables and now i am com committing the transaction so once i commit the transaction you will find that all the locks are released see locks held became zero so which means that uh, it is at a transactional uh, boundary so all the locks that are acquired for the transaction are completely released okay so this is the default behavior now what we are going to do is i'm going to do connect reset and i'm setting this registry uh, variable db2 keep table lock as connection then i'm stopping the instance then i'm starting the instance then i'm connecting to the uh, test database again again i'm running the same four queries select start from table a table b table c table d with four isolation levels okay so let me just do that now okay connect reset uh, db2 set has completed stop processing is completed uh, it has again started the instance and it is connecting to the database and it has run all the four queries so now again the four queries have run without the still i have not committed the transaction okay four queries table a table b table c table d okay so now uh, let us look here what is the list applications is application handle is 7 so update monitor switches ok so application handle is now 7 ok I am getting the snapshot for locks so as you can see uh, table A one table level lock has been acquired table C one table level lock has been acquired table D one table level lock has been acquired table b another uh, table level lock has acquired and table c there are also row level locks because it is at rs isolation level okay so now all the locks are acquired okay on table a b c d okay now what we are going to do is on app 1 i am going to commit the transaction so once i commit the transaction normal behavior is all the locks will be released but this is not going to be a normal behavior so we have set the registry variable right so let's get the snapshot for the locks information now you can see that uh, table b and table a the locks are not released this is because of the registry variable that is being set since table uh, a and table b let us look at the queries so you can see that they are using ur and cs isolation level so when you are using the queries with ur and cs isolation levels the locks will not be released the table c and table d locks are released rs and rr isolation level so you can see that table c and table d locks are not persisted table a and table b locks are persisted in the lock list memory area so so only on uh, connection reset only these locks will be released from the memory so this is the behavior uh, that's it in this video tutorial uh, be uh, cautious when you use this registry variable because it, it cannot be applied just directly onto any OLTP or analytical database. Uh, that's it in this video tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel DB2LUW Academy. See you in the next video tutorial. Thanks. Bye bye.